So today I will be preaching on Ananias. Uh, there's two Ananiases mentioned in the book of Acts. Uh, we're going to be talking about the first one. Uh, this story is found in Acts chapter 5, if you want to open your Bibles to that. A uh, little hot jack. Um, so this story, when you read it at the surface level, it's often going to be used for things like uh, churches asking their congregants to tithe more uh, because when you look at the surface, it's just a guy not giving enough money to the church so God zapped him out of the earth. But uh, it's really a story about not devoting uh, themselves, not Ananias not devoting himself to God and really lying. Uh, so I'll be reading verses 1 through 4. It says... Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife, his wife Zephira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, brought the rest, and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, to, said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold, and after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died, and great fear seized all who had heard what had happened. So, uh, to give a little context to this story, so... Ananias sold his property, but did not give everything to the church. Uh, it was a trend at the time for everybody in the early church to sell off their possessions, their property, and give the money to the church to sort of fund it. <coughs> Tithing didn't really exist at that point, so that was how the church was able to operate uh, and do their good works. So. Um, this isn't, again, this isn't a sermon about tithing or anything like that. Uh, it does have a deeper meaning. So Ananias, he brought this money to the apostles' feet with the acknowledgement that it was everything. He didn't say, oh, here's some money that I have for you. He said, I sold my property and I'm giving everything to you when he fully knew that he wasn't. He even went to the point where he conspired with his wife to do this act. And that is what made them so mad. And really, it's the same with our, ourselves devoting our lives to God. We tend to go and say, oh, I'm a believer. I'm devoting my life to Christ. But when you actually look at their lives, they're not. They're devoted. They're handpicking what they want Christ uh, to be in fought back. They're picking and choosing what they want to give to Christ, and it doesn't work that way. In my own life, I'm a musician, and if I try and play a song without devoting my entire mind to it, I can't do it. If I try and play a worship set and I have my mind on something else, it's going to sound horrible. The only way that I can truly do play a worship set is to focus my whole mind on it, and it's the same way with God. We are incapable of multitasking. Whenever we try and do more than, thing, more than one thing at once, we fail. And the only person that can do that is God. He's the only one that can truly multitask. Our minds are not smart enough or capable enough of doing this. So, um, <clears throat> we aren't giving our whole hearts to God. And really, it's just the same as lying to him. We tend to not only lie to him, but lie to others. We say that we are giving everything, but we don't give everything. We give the leftovers to God, essentially. It's like saying, this person bought me a house, so instead of taking him out to dinner, I'll just give him the leftovers that are in my fridge. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll stop lying but you know what? I want to keep cursing with my friends. I'll stop doing this, but I'll keep doing that. We hand choose what we want to give up 
instead of giving everything. And it's not truly being with God. He has done so much for you that it is disrespectful even to not give everything. He, God has created the earth. He's created everything around us. He's created us. And then he sent his son to die on the cross. And his son took on all of the sin of the world, all the past sin, all the present sin, all of the future sin. And the best thing we do to thank him is just say, oh, I'll give you some of my life. It, it doesn't work that way. We have to make the decision of whether we're going to be with God or without him. There's not an in-between. We have to choose. And I want to read two verses to you. You don't have to open your Bibles to them. Uh, but it's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Uh, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and it is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So when you look at this verse uh, and study it, the word I want to focus on the word faith. Um, we have more of a misconstrued view of the word faith in our culture. We tend to just think of it as trusting someone, and that's it. But it's not really what it means when you study the Bible. Uh, the Greek word for it really means to be all in. So I'm going to reread those two verses and replace faith with all in. For it is by grace you have been saved through being all in, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. The only way that you or anybody can obtain salvation is through being all in to God. There's no in-between that gets you to salvation. You're either saved or you're not saved. You're either not giving anything or you're giving everything. You, there's nothing that you can do in between. You can't choose to be in the middle. And when you do choose to be in the middle, you're just creating a false faith. All in doesn't mean some of it in. It's just all in. And a lot of times our motive for doing that is peer pressure. We say, we go to church and look at someone who is all in and go, I want to look like that, so I'll fake it. We fake it till we make it and it doesn't work. <laughs> it, we don't make it, essentially. And what happens is we end up living a lie. And <clears throat> so that lie is not just to others, but it's also to God. Um, and really the reason for that is our stubbornness and our fear. As humans, we are too stubborn and fearful of the outcomes of everything around us to be able to truly give our lives up to God and truly follow Him. We have to be able to give it up. And when you really look at it, it's logical to do so when you give that up. God is the only person that is truly loving, truly faithful. He is the only person that can ever get you free from this world of sin and bondage. And I want to pinpoint two verses uh, out of 1 John chapter 4. Uh, this is verse 18. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has nothing to, or because fear has to do with punishment, the one who fears is not made perfect in love. And then, if we go back within that chapter to verse eight, it says, "Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love." So, if we put those two verses together, it's really saying that if we are fearful, we are without God. We have to give up that fear in order to gain salvation. We have to give up that fear to gain the closeness to God because <clears throat> it's the only way we will be able to make it in this world. We are given so much more and we choose to not do anything with it. So, 
when we look at this section of verses as a whole in Acts chapter 5, we see Ananias keeping back for himself. He's refusing to do, uh, he's refusing to give everything that he has to God. It's not about money. The, the apostles said it themselves. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold, and after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. They didn't care about the money. And really, most churches don't either. We need to give our lives to God. That's what church is here for. It's here to build a relationship with God. It's here to build faith in God, to build being all in. Um, <clears throat> so we have to stop living like Ananias. We can't just give partially. We have to give it all. Because really, when you look what happened to him, it's miraculously bad. He was, he was zapped from earth because he angered God so much. The last time God got so mad that he started zapping people from earth was Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at what, ha look at what was happening there before that was destroyed. <clears throat> people were trying to rape angels. People were committing these horrible sins. And God got so angry that he sent fiery sulfur down to kill them all. In this story, God got so mad that he just immediately killed Ananias. If that doesn't show you how mad this makes God, I don't know what I can say. If, if, you have, if you're not doing this, you're angering God. So you have to stop giving partially and start giving fully. God wants you to be all in. You either have to give nothing or give everything. And once you give everything, God is going to look past what you did in your, in your past. He's not, if you ask for forgiveness, he will provide the salvation. He won't hold it against you. You just have to enter into this deeper faith. He's out there loving you, but you're not loving him back. All he wants from you is your love back. He's providing you the most love you could ever think of. He is love. So if we're not going to acknowledge that, we truly have no hope. 